In this video, we will show how to upload software and set up a new control panel after replacement has taken place for an Evolution Elite Smart Touch controls. Smart Touch controls will be easily identifiable from the front of the unit that have the USB port attachment under the control panel. We will be using a customer specific software for this demonstration, but your customer software could be different depending on the customer this is installed for. It is important to note that the USB supplied with the new control panel is blank and does not contain any software on it. However, that blank USB can be used to download software from another control panel on the fryer you have installed the new control on. Be sure to check out the link in the description for a video on how to extract software from a control board. For situations where you might be replacing a control panel on a single VAT unit, you can reach out to HennyPenny Tech Support and they will provide you with a file so you can download it to a blank USB that was provided with the new control. If nobody has previously removed it, there is also a spare USB drive behind control panel number one, zip tied to the USB cable coming off the back of the control board with the original software for that specific fryer when it was built. You can also check with store personnel to see if the original USB drive that came with the fryer was given to them when it was installed. Once we're ready to turn the control on, we'll simply press the power switch and go ahead and turn the fryer on. It's gonna ask for a setup code and the code is one, two, three. Now it will ask you to insert the USB to go ahead and flash the software. We will go ahead and remove the cap and insert our programmed USB stick. Now it's gonna ask if we want to go ahead and load the software that's on the USB. We will press number one, and then it's gonna go ahead and ask us to flash it, and then to confirm it. Now this process may take a few moments for it to go ahead and check the file and upload it to the control. Now we can see that it has loaded the software, so we can go ahead and continue through the setup process. This is where it's gonna ask us for our language. We can use the up or down F buttons to scroll through the different types of languages. For English, we'll go ahead and scroll over to our next step. This step is gonna ask us the temperature format that we would like to use, whether it be Fahrenheit, or we can hit up or down to change it to Celsius. For our next step, we come to time, it's gonna ask us for the format if we want 12 hour or if we want 24 hour. The majority of people are gonna be using 12 hour instead of the 24 hour version, which is gonna be similar to military time. This is where we can go ahead and enter our time. The current time now is 314, so we will use the product buttons below to enter that. Once we have that entered, we can go ahead and go to our next step, which is gonna ask us AM or PM. We are currently at 3.14 PM, so I'll use the up arrow to change that to PM. And then once I'm done, I can go to my next step. Now it's gonna ask me for the date format. Generally, we're gonna have the month, the day, and the year. So I'll go ahead and hit the P button to go to our next step and it's gonna go ahead and ask me to enter the, the date. This is where I can use the product buttons again below to go ahead and enter the month, the day, and the year. And today is December 14th of 2021. Once I've entered that, I can go ahead and go to my next step. And now it's gonna ask us if we wanna use daylight savings time for US, or if we wanna have that option of off, or we can go to FSA, or for Europe, we can select Europe. So we'll go ahead and go back to US for USA, and we'll select that option. Now it's gonna ask us the fryer type. We have the option here between gas, or if we scroll up, we have electric. 
So this particular unit is a gas model. So we'll go ahead and go back to gas and then we can proceed to our next step. Now this is where it's going to ask us if it's a full vat or a split vat. For a full vat, we want to make sure we select full or for a split vat, we want to make sure that we select split. This particular unit is a full vat, so we'll leave that there and go to our next step. This question is going to ask if it's auto lift enabled. For units with auto lifts, these will be located at the back of the unit that use automatic lifts to lower and raise baskets at the beginning and end of a cook cycle. This particular unit is not equipped with that, so we'll go ahead and scroll to our next step. This is going to ask us if we have bulk oil supply. This is in the case that we would have a company maybe like RTI or another company that would have bulk oil in the back of the store that is hooked up to the fryer and supplies bulk oil. This particular unit does not have that, so we'll scroll to the next step, but it is important to set this up properly. The next question is going to be bulk oil dispose. This is going to be the same thing, except for in this case, the store would have a bulk oil tank at the back of their store that after they have cleaned out their fryer and they want to change their oil, it would go ahead and dispose to bulk if it is set up properly. We have the option of no. We have the option of front for front disposed units. And then we have the option for rear, for rear disposing units. This particular unit disposes from the rear, so we will make sure we have this option selected, and then we will go to our next step. This is where it's going to ask for the serial number. It's important to always try to input the serial number. This is important because if the data plate on the inside of the left-hand door happens to get scrubbed away or removed, and also the other serial number location is not visible, this is another area that we can come in and check for a serial number at a later point. Be sure to check the inside of the left-hand door for the serial number to put this data into the control. If that data label is not visible, we can check the left-hand side of the fryer right at the top of the countertop, and this is engraved into the side of the metal so that we can read that. Moving on, it's going to ask us if we want to edit the serial number. We will go ahead and select the number one check mark. And it's going to ask us for the edit serial number if we want the standard or the custom. Most likely, we are going to want the standard. So what this is going to ask us for is the standard prefix. Depending on what customer will indicate which prefix we have. This will be the first two letters at the beginning of the serial number. So for this particular unit, the prefix we have is going to be NE. So we will select that option. And then this is where we can go ahead and enter our seven digit serial number with our product buttons below. We can go ahead and enter one, eight, one, two. And now that we have this slot filled, we'll press our P button to go to the next step. And then we're gonna enter zero, zero, four. Now that we have our serial number complete with our prefix and our seven digit number, we can hit the P button to go to our next step. It's going to ask us if we want to save it and we're going to hit yes. And now we have our serial number entered. This is where we want to make sure that we don't hit this number one check mark because it's going to take us right back into that loop. So we want to make sure we hit our P button to go to the next step. And it's going to ask us for our preferred second language. In this case, our second language is going to be Espanol. So we'll go ahead and hit the P button to move to the next step. And then second volume, which generally is not going to be used. So we'll go ahead and go past that. And then last one, depending on customer specific menus, they can use a quick configuration and select the menu option that they want here. So be sure to ask your customer which preferred menu they would like to have, as this will set it up for a specific way if it happens to be hash browns, french fries, etc., or maybe they have that configuration set up differently. So this is where we can change that. And this completes the control panel setup process.